Hello and welcome to Code Shots, a series on YouTube where uh, I show you some code. So what today we're going to have a look at is some app config and Lambda functions. So in essence, what I've done is I've deployed a serverless application, well, running on a Lambda function, but I'm actually going to do some configuration items on it through app config. So let's have a look. If I go here, and I, this is my CDK uh, directory. If I vim this and open up lib, uh, open up my main, uh, my main library or my main application for um, uh, CDK, one of the things you can see what, what I'm doing here. So I'm actually just simply creating a super simple serverless application running on a single Lambda function and uh, behind a single HTTP API gateway. Um, one of the differences I have here is I am actually having different environments. So if I go to bin, you can see the here that I'm actually able, I'm capable uh, with CDK to launch two stacks of the same application, one called prod and the other called staging. Now the difference between the two is actually super simple and it is part of these variables. Depending on which stack is launched, I set different um, different variables to it, or I pass on different variables to CDK and in essence to Lambda as well. So what do I do here? I just create, uh, I define different API gateway names, simple as that, nothing super special, but also I'm passing it on different Lambda variables. Now I, I'll get into those in a minute. Why are they important? Let's just have some, uh, just have a look at some code here. So this is a Lambda function. It's a super simple Lambda function running on Python uh, and it's being passed these environment variables on line 38. Uh, additionally, because we are going to be using app config, I have added permission to my Lambda function role, um, or actually I've added a policy to my Lambda function role to be able to interact with uh, app config, or it's actually going to be able to run get configuration on app config in EU West one. And I'll show you why this is important in a minute. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, the API gateway again, uh, running an HTTP API gateway from AWS, uh, very simple, running a Lambda proxy integration with it. And finally, uh, outputting a CloudFormation output of uh, just the API URL here. Cool. Now let's, let's have a look at, uh, at our Lambda function because that's very important. So open up Python. There you go. So this is, a, this is an app, a uh, Lambda function that just spits out some uh, random quotes. So I have a bunch of quotes for uh, from a comic strip I used to read when I was young. So I have them both in English and in Serbian or Serbo-Croatian or Croatian per se, yeah. Um, and I'm basically gonna be spitting out some information. I'm, I'm, I'm returning a JSON body, which contains a timestamp, an environment where this runs into, and the data. The data in itself is gonna be a random sample of those quotes. So how can I do something here? How can I make configuration changes? Um, well, this is where a service called app config can help me a lot. Now, what configuration changes am I talking about? Well, for example, if I want to limit the amount of uh, quotes I return, that's one thing. If I want to change the language of the things that is, they're returned on, or for example, if I want to want to introduce or toggle chaos on my application, I can do that as well. So basically I, I'm using this as a, as a toggle switch um, for my application. And why would you use app config in, in comparison to just putting it in a Lambda function environment variable or just using some, some something like that or even hard coding it? Well, it's faster to do it this way uh, and it's more secure in a sense that it's easier to roll back. So th there's a bunch of things out there and I'll show you as, as we go along. So here's what, how, how this is done. I'm actually using uh, the AWS SDK, the Boto3 SDK for Python. Uh, I'm creating a client for app config here. And if I go back, uh, you see that I have a config, um, basically uh, using, using, using the app config client, it's getting the configuration. Now, the things I'm passing to this Lambda function, again, depending on which uh, environment it's running or, or which stack it's launched in, I'm passing it a application name an environment and configuration. Now, these things are very much connected to um, to app config. So app config has a concept of an application, an environment, and a configuration item. So I'm passing those two, those three items here. Uh, additionally, I'm passing a client ID, but I'll explain that in a minute. So once I get those items, I can I can do something with them. I can I can uh, if there's a limit uh, enabled, 
uh, I can use it. If enabled is, uh, a limit is not enabled or there are no limit results, uh, the limit results are basically the number of quotes I want back, uh, it will return by, the def by default two. Uh, uh, for example, if uh, I want a specific language, if I say the return language is this, make sure that it uses that language, else use English. And last but not least, the data part of it is I'm just getting a random sample from those quotes from the language I specified and the amount I specified in the return limit. Uh, and for the chaos part, this is interesting or useful for chaos engineering. So uh, with this feature toggle, I can just enable or disable chaos on my application. And in this case, I'm simply putting a, a random chance or 20% chance that my, that my application will return a 500 error, you know, just to make sure that everything else is listening properly or uh, reacting to it properly. So how do we do this uh, from the app config perspective? Well, let's have a look at the uh, AWS uh, web UI. So this is app config. Now, before starting anything with app config, we need to look at um, the place where we actually where we are actually storing this configuration, and that's actually in um, parameter store. So parameter store is a place where you, well, you can store parameters, uh, but here's the example. Um, this is the parameter, this is the configuration actually that we are storing here. And you can see that it has a version eight. I have eight versions of this uh, parameter, which is different depending on how I change it. So I have pull, bool, uh, enable limit uh, results set to false. My entry result limit is two, doesn't really matter because it's set to false, so it doesn't really care. My language is set to English and chaos is not enabled. So this is the parameter store. Now, when you look at the application in uh, app config, so it, it has like a logical grouping of configurations and environments for a specific, let's call it application. Uh, looking at this thing here, uh, we see have, we have a uh, production environment or Lambda prod and Lambda stage. So these are different environments, which in essence provide you with a different version, potentially a different version of a specific configuration. Uh, and those configuration profiles are here, Lambda limiter, and Lambda limiter is basically sourcing it from the SSM parameter store and has all of these versions of the Lambda limiter or, or, or all this version of this parameter. Now, if I go to like, for example, environments, and if I go to staging, you can see that staging is currently using Lambda limiter version seven. So staging has a different version of this code. And what is in that different version? Well, we see that in version, we have the uh, enable limit set to true, L limit is five, language is server creation, and the chaos is true. Interesting. Now let's go back to CDK and let's deploy our CDK stack uh, to, to see how this works. So if I do, let me zoom in, npm run build, please work. Thank you. And then CDK, deploy now i'm gonna deploy both production and staging at the same time so this is going to basically create two stacks uh of of of, of well of applications basically going to create two applications in this case uh, i'm gonna say yes and as before i'm gonna fast forward to this so i don't have to wait see you in a bit And we are back. Okay, now we can see that this has been launched. We have our staging URL. Now I want my production URL. How does how does one get that? Here's a little neat trick you can do with CDK. So CDK deploy prod and staging. You can run this command again because everything is deployed. It's just gonna give you the outputs of cloud formation, which is pretty neat. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take these. Um, uh, URLs and put them into uh, into uh, environment. Uh, sorry, into variables. So prod URL and let me just paste this. Uh, set stage URL and then you can see that I did try this before. If I copy this and then paste and well, bam. And one of the things I'm gonna do right now is a HTTP prod URL. So I'm just gonna using HTTP here to get my production application. As you can see here, we have a, a, a Lambda 200 
return. Uh, we have some data, it's in English. Uh, we can see that it's a prod environment and the timestamp, that's pretty cool. If I clear this and then use stage and stage URL, we can see something different. We see an error. Oh, maybe it's that chaos I was talking about. <laughs> Let me try again. Excellent. So we have 200, we have five quotes and you can see it's in Serbian or Croatian or Silver Croatian, however you call it. Um, we have uh, environment Lambda stage being set here and the timestamp as well. So uh, speaking of chaos, if I would be doing this from time to time, we will get a 500 error. Uh, as you can see in the, in the beginning, there's a 20% chance for me to get this and I'm not getting it. Uh, so uh, yeah, at one point I may get one, but I've been lucky so far. Wow, really? Hmm. Okay, well, trust me, it will happen at least 20% of the time, or at least there's a 20, oh, there we go. There's a 20% chance that I uh, that I get this error. See 500 here, and there's an error that I just add there. So how does this actually look from the, what can we do now with this? Now, as I said, you can do this straightly from CDK and add it as a Lambda function uh, environment variables, but there are a few things on app config that can help you do this at scale and faster. Because if you want to deploy this change through CDK or through Lambda, you would basically update, you would have to update the environment variables for all Lambda functions or all, um, all things using this a specific configuration or just change the parameter store, uh, parameter store value. But doing that can be a prob problematic. For example, let's, let's change stage, let's change stage back into the production version now because you see that it's running a version seven and the, and the production version or the production environment is running version eight. So let's go to Lambda stage and click start deployment. Now this is this is kind of the, the fun part of app config that you can actually deploy these configurations in a more controlled manner. So I'm gonna use this um, Lambda limiter configuration. I'm gonna choose the parameter version eight and then deployment strategy, this is where I can pick uh, in what time or how it's going to deploy. For example, I'm going to choose the, the test demo one, but it's going to be linear 50% every 30 seconds. So this means it's going to uh, increase or it's going to basically deploy initially to 50% of your users or 50% of the configuration uh, consumers. And then after 30 seconds, it's going to add more 50% or, or it's going to uh, deploy to everybody. If I do that and click start deployment, now to explain a bit on that, uh, if you look at my code here, so let me just go back into my Python code, uh, zoom in on that. If you look here, uh, what I'm doing here on line 85, I'm passing on a client ID. And in this case, I'm passing, passing on just the function name, but in general, you would pass something more, something more unique, like a client ID or, or, or something like that, um, an actual client user ID or, or, or a transaction ID or something uh, where App config will use that to determine the amount of unique consumers of this at any time. And then it will basically determine that 50% of those will get the new configuration and the 50% will not, or depending on your configuration profile, how you have actually configured this. Now it takes some time. So it takes like at least two minutes for this to work. Um, as you can see, the deployment is complete. Uh, it's gonna be in the baking stage. The baking stage is kind of like finishing stage until uh, it's sure that after the baking stage, everybody will be getting the exact same configuration. So uh, if I go back to Lambda stage, we will see that it's currently in deployment or it's actually in the baking stage. Now, just to stress this, this is not deploying the configuration anywhere on your Lambda functions or your EC2 instances or your containers. This is just deploying on this app config endpoint, which version of this configuration and in essence, which version of the parameter store parameter it's serving. So going back here, it's currently still in deploying. So let me just uh, show you that this is still in the Nope, 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 go back like that. Let's HTTP stage URL. Nope, actually we got the latest version of uh, configuration. So you can see that we're doing this on the staging environment, but we're actually getting a 200, which we should. And also we're getting the, um, the, the data in English and we can see that the environment is still staged, but we are getting the data in English right now. And uh, there should be no uh, problems here with, there is, should be no chaos introduced. So that's it. Um, this was a simple example of how can you use 
um, how can you use app config with your Lambda functions? Now, you can use app config with your normal web applications, with your containers, doesn't really matter. As long as you uh, invoke the configuration through a thing such as this, um, um, through invoking it like through uh, through an API call with the AWS SDK. Thank you very much. I really hope you have enjoyed this uh, quick look at app config and um, uh, CDK. Um, well, join me sometime soon for a new edition of Code Chats. Take care. Bye bye.